Hello and welcome to the Django DRF project e-commerce. This tutorial is part of a series of tutorials which you can watch for free. The link to the YouTube course playlist is in the video description. This course is also available on Udemy where you can watch the course ad free, download the tutorial source code and access all updated tutorials and playlist. The link to the course which will always provide the best price can be found in the video description. Now, if you're moving into or learning development and moving into industry as a, maybe a software developer, and there are lots of many other career paths which would utilize source control or version control, then it's well worth spending a little bit of time learning. The premise is really simple. Source control or version control essentially is going to help us track the changes and helps us manage the changes to our code. Now, I realize that for some, there is going to be a hell of a lot of information within this course to learn already. And this is just adding an extra layer of information. So I do want to try and introduce source control and the importance of or version control, the importance of it and how to start utilizing it in a really kind of simplistic way. And then maybe throughout this course, we can start to then make it more predominant and talk a little bit more about it as or when you become comfortable maybe with the code, the environment that you're developing within. So I'm making the assumption that you have installed GitHub Desktop, a really easy to use tool um, that can help you start to experience some of the features and for you to start to practice source control or version control. So once you've installed GitHub Desktop, you won't be presented necessarily with this screen. You need to log in. So check out the, the instructions on how to get started. But once you've finished installing, we simply just need to now create a new GitHub repository. So you will need a GitHub account if you haven't already signed up. So once you start this software, you will be presented with a screen that doesn't look like this. Um, I'm not too sure if I can kind of get back to the, the main screen, but if you navigate to the menu, and whether you're on Mac or Windows, looking for file, I know you can't see that, but you can kind of see the drop down appear, and you're looking for new repository. Now on a Mac, I can just press Command and N. So you're looking for a new repository. So whatever way you get to this, it should look fairly the same here. The whole principle here is that we want to create a new repository. So we need a repository name. So I'm going to call this Django uh, DRF commerce. There we go, e or e-commerce. Okay, so that's my repository name. Now I'm going to leave the path the same here. So we're going to use this local path that's been provided. There are a few different options here, which I'm just going to ignore for now. Uh, so let's go ahead and just create a new repository. Okay, so essentially what we've done now is we've just made a new folder in that folder location. And that folder is being watched by GitHub Desktop. Anytime you make a change to that folder, that will be considered a change to the code. And so that will then appear here and then we can update the repository, update the changes to our code. So let me just take you through the workflow here and to give you a general understanding of what it is that we're going to do with this. All right, so first of all, let's just navigate to where we have saved our new folder. So for me, it was in the, I think it was documents, wasn't it? And then GitHub. So I've just navigated to that here. You didn't see that, but I've navigated to that. And you can see I've got some folders here. And one of the folders is our Django DRF e-commerce folder that we've just generated. There's nothing inside of this. Okay, so I've just gone inside of this folder. And I'm just going to drop this down. And if you remember, our project folder is right here. This is the product folder that we're using in Visual Studio Code. So that's our project at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, I'm going to ignore this event folder here. I'm just going to copy across the, hmm, yeah, and the command as well. So let's just go ahead and I'm going to copy this over to the new folder. So this is the folder here at the top that we're using in Visual Studio Code, the project folder that we created originally. And here is the product folder we just generated with GitHub. So I'm going to paste it in there. That's the whole project in place. Now it can be, just make sure maybe you've uh, 
stop the server before you do that. Right, so now our code is all there, apart from the virtual environment, of course. So let's go back now to, oh, not Visual Studio Code, let's go back to GitHub. Right, so inside of GitHub now, you can see that it's detected changes. Those changes, obviously, the fact that there was nothing there to begin with. So it's recognized the fact that we have now moved a whole bunch of files into that folder. And now we're ready to commit. So as I mentioned before, version control or source control tracks the management of changes to our code. So somewhere there needs to be a file which has all the information about the changes that have happened within our code base. So that isn't going to be updated automatically. We're going to let GitHub know when we want to make that commit, when we want to say, okay, these are all the changes. Now I want to commit those changes to um, this repository and I want you to track those changes. So the idea here is that we create some code. When we're ready, we then create a, a commit. And that is essentially telling GitHub to save all the changes up until that point. And it keeps a record of all those changes. And then when we're ready, what we can do is we can then push that repository, those changes that are saved locally uh, or stored locally, and we can then push that to GitHub. And that will then save it onto our GitHub repository. And essentially that is just basically saving all the information that we've generated about all the changes within in our code online. So let's go through this process. But before we do this, we will find that there are a lot of files here that we don't actually want to save in our version control. So for example, we don't want to save the environment file because, well, let's be honest, it has uh, security problems or there's security issues, sorry, here. If we were to save our um, .env folder, remember that has some sensitive information that we don't want to share. So we want to maybe avoid that. So to do that, what we're going to need to do is within our project, we're going to need to set up a, a new file. Now we're doing this in the old folder first and then we move it across just in case we're getting confused there. So let's go ahead and create a new file here. This is in the uh, where we were working before. So we're going to need to make a git ignore file dot git ignore. So within this file, I basically just describe and tell git or GitHub what files I don't want them to track. Now, I don't want them to track the .env file, remember, because that's got all my secret keys and sensitive information. So I definitely don't want that to be tracked. And I don't want the virtual environment to also be tracked. And what I mean by that is I don't want it to be uploaded to GitHub. And in addition to that, Django or Python will generate some cache files. So what you're looking at here is just some cache files. So um, some of the code has been... So something that we might want to consider here, and you can see that I've got some additional code here because I forgot to add this when I originally recorded. Something to think about with the environment file here is that if we don't add it, if we don't include it in our source control, it means that obviously it's saved locally. But what would happen if we were to delete our repository locally? Well, everything's saved on GitHub, of course, apart from some of this additional information which we have um, requested in the git ignore to ignore. So what might be useful is to not include this .env in the actual uh, repository, but to maybe just copy and paste it and then just rena rename that to, <laughs> what's happening with my keyboard? Rename that to example.env and then just remove uh, any of the, just remove any of the text there. And that would just give us an indication of what exactly needs to be set up should we load the project from source control. Um, else we would have to work out what um, key values we would need to set up. So that would be okay for us to store in source control. So we keep that um, in source control. But like I said, we won't actually um, upload our .env file to source control. We won't add that to source control because we don't want to add this uh, sensitive information. Compiled and it just helps the speed of the performance of the application. So it kind of pre-compiled 
So these folders here are something that, again, I don't want to include in my source control and potentially I don't want to add my database either. So as we move through the project, we will add to this git ignore file. But for now, we need to just add those files and folders in here to tell GitHub not to track these files and folders. So let's start with the virtual environment. Now we could categorize these, make a little, uh, we could make a comment here if we wanted to, to kind of organize this, but I don't think there's need to, I don't think we need to at this point. So the event folder, we don't want to track that. So pytest um, underscore cache files. We don't want those to be tracked. Um, and if any folder which has pycache in it, in it. So if you're looking to learn a little bit about the um, different options here, then just check out the web page for this. So GitHub, um, git ignore. Um, have a look at that or just git ignore sorry um, have a look at that in git and that will give you some indication of the different uh, values or different properties that you can add here features that you can add to ignore certain files and folders right so db.sqlite um, the .env uh, file um, eventually we will create a coverage file. So I'm just going to add this in now. I may as well. And .vs code. Okay, so we come back. VS code. Um, so we haven't set that up yet, but we will do. So I'll, I'll take you back to this. But this is the list that we're going to start off with. Now, let's go back to GitHub Desktop. Now, the reason why I didn't do it directly in here because I just wanted to show you in action. So you can see here we've got the PyCache, um, the database here, the .env. Those are all going to be tracked to begin with, potentially. So what we're going to do now, let's go ahead and just move this file that we've just built. So just close everything there. We're going to move this from the old folder. Now, let's see if we can remember. So this is the old folder. This, that's the project folder that we're just working with in. You can see, was it? Yep. Um, where's our file? It's not been updated, is it? Okay, let's just try that again. So this is a project folder. Uh, because it's a, uh, a dot file, it's, it's being hidden. So here in the Mac, because it's a dot file, it's hidden. So I press shift command dot in the folder. And you can see that it now appears. So I can see the dot get ignored. So I'm just going to move that from the folder that we've just created, a project folder, over to the GitHub folder here. So I'm just going to drop it in the root here. Okay, so now if I move back over to where it was, the GitHub desktop, um, you can now see they've been removed. So a lot of the different items have now been removed. I'll notice still that the dbsqlite 3, maybe I spelled that incorrectly, and that's why that's still being added there. So let's just double check that. Let's go back into Visual Studio Code, back into our old, oh, the files now disappeared. So... Let's go back into GitHub here. Um, so this is a git ignore file. Let's um, open it up in Visual Studio Code. Apologies for these different changes. Open. Yep. So I've just opened that file up. Just need to double check that. SQLite. I uh, forgot the three at the end. So I'm just editing that again. Close that. Open up desktop GitHub again. You can see now the, that has disappeared. So I'm pretty happy with that. I think that's all the files that I do want to actually track here yeah okay so when we're ready with that uh, make sure you have made those changes because we definitely don't want to upload the virtual environment there are many many files in there and that would take quite a long time so once you've done that uh, we're now ready to make our first commit now remember what we're doing here is we're essentially just going to make a record of all those changes and then once we've done that we can then push it up to our GitHub repository. So we can make a summary here, write a summary of the changes that we made and that can be useful for other developers. I'm just gonna type in NC for new commit and then commit to main. So why main, what is main? Well, that is our main, uh, that's our main branch. Okay, so when we create a new repository, we have something called a branch and we'll be using different branches. So we become familiar with that throughout this project, but that's our default branch. Okay, so once we've done that, you can see here it says publish repository. So we're now ready to publish our repository, save all this information onto GitHub. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, we asked the name, 
So we could change the name of this code at this time. We're also given the option of keeping the code private. So we've got two options, public and private. If we deselect this option here, it means that anyone can see our code. So I'm going to keep it private for this at this point. Um, and then that's it. Just publish repository. It's at this point, everything is now being uploaded to GitHub and everything is now saved on GitHub. So I can just view on GitHub, open that up, just bring that down. And there we go. That's our new repository. And that's the code that we've just generated. Notice here, it, it's got the initial information um, to give me, as a developer, a guide on maybe what changes were made there. That was the uh, description um, title um, that we could have added more information about. Um, so you can go inside and just double check and make sure everything's there. But everything should be there that we is ex that we expect to be there. Now, you may have made a mistake and you may want to do this again a few times to familiarize yourself. Not a problem. Then just go into settings here and then go down the bottom and there's an option then of deleting the repository. So if you made any mistakes, if you want to do it again, then just delete the repository and start again. That was fairly fast paced, but hopefully you've got the general idea now. Now, by all means, go back and try this again. It's, I think it's important for you to get the grasp of what we've just done there and the general principles of utilizing this tool to save and track and manage our code. Just to tidy everything up before we leave here, just make sure that we have, just close that, just make sure that we have now removed the initial project folder if you were working on the desktop. So I'm just going to remove that. Now that will delete the virtual environment. Don't forget that. So let's now open up Visual Studio Code. Let's open up our new GitHub repository, which is in Documents. Now GitHub and inside of GitHub, we have uh, our new project here, Django DRF e-commerce. And inside of here, inside of here, we have our DRF project. So we're going to open that up. There we go. So that's our project. Notice that we don't have a virtual environment here now. So let's just quickly go through that process. I'll take you through that process very quickly. So um, we want to add a new virtual environment again. So let's go ahead and do Python 3. Again, whether you're in Windows or Mac, that's going to be slightly different. MV, MV, V, MV. Okay. So that's our virtual environment. Don't forget, we now need to activate it. So again, on Windows and Mac, it's slightly different. That's activated and now, now we need to use our requirements file. So this is why we're developing it. So I could show you this. Now we need to install all the dependencies so we can get back to where we were. Right, so here we need to change directory into our DRF e-commerce folder, DRF e-commerce folder. And there we can access the requirements file. And now we need to pip install requirement, oh, pip install, and then use the R flag to tell pip we're going to install from a list. There we go. So that should then install all of these packages and take us back to where we were previously. So now we can do a pi test. We should have one test. There we go. There's a warning. Oh, okay. I didn't, I forgot. I forgot to update the requirements file with the um, pi test Django. So um, let me just pip install. Um, it was pi test Django. Let me just double check that. Yeah, yeah, PyTest Django. Okay, so pip install PyTest Django. Okay, and let's not forget now to update uh, pip freeze. Let's go ahead and update the requirements text with that. Uh, apologies, we didn't do that, but that's all good practice. So everything is up to date now. Uh, PyTest Django there in our requirements text file. So hopefully you get the grasp now, understand the reason for having this requirements text file. We've now just set up our project again and we're now to ready to develop further.